Good morning. Welcome to this Aztec webinar, Managing Teamwork Effectively During COVID-19. Good morning. I can see quite a number of you have already joined the meeting. So good morning to you all and welcome. Okay, so I'm uh, just going to invite you to join us for managing teamwork effectively during COVID-19. My name's Neil Farnworth and I'm... Good morning, my name's Neil Farnworth and I work with Aztec as one of their um, deliverers of training courses. I hope you can all hear me. I'm getting nothing back here at all. If you'd like to just pop me a little chat box at the bottom and just let me know that you can hear me. Yes, I'm getting uh, greetings from Pakistan. So, excellent. I presume you can hear. You can hear fine. That's great. Thanks, Mohammed, for that. Thank you very much. Always reassuring to know. My name is Neil Farnworth with Aztec, and uh, we're here today to talk about this topic. Uh, it's a sad time for a lot of people, I know, and it's a difficult time for business and a difficult time for us uh, to get through this uh, COVID-19 lockdown. Um, I don't think I've left my premises for a month, so uh, it is proving very, very difficult. But let's let's look at what we can do about managing teams and, and um, concentrating our management activities. So I'd like to keep this um, uh, full of packed with full of features, lots of things to talk about. So uh, I think those of you who know me from delivering courses in the classroom, uh, that I like a story and I always tell a good story. Um, so what I will like to do is take advantage of the webinar tools as well and get you chatting to me uh, and give me your stories as we go through. I'll try and pick those up from the little box on my right hand side. Um, I've spared you a video of me, uh, <laughs> which uh, which I think is uh, sometimes is sometimes good because I haven't been out, as I say, for a month. So I haven't had my hair cut, so I'm look, looking as smart as I normally do. But, you know, these things are set to try us. So we're going to look at six uh, topics today. We're going to look at attitudes to remote working because I think when we're trying to manage people, there's a lot in the attitude uh, of ourselves and our staff as to whether they're accepting or not of, of the situation. We're going to look at uh, technology. I'm not uh, really pushing a lot of technology here. I'm, I just will name a few platforms and talk about the categories of things we could use. And then I'll be interested to get your comments on the platforms that you're using or you're trying to work around with. Here we're using Click Meeting. I know Zoom is another one that's very, very popular at the moment uh, for meetings of this type uh, and getting interaction going. Um, managers' concerns. We're going to look at your concerns about remote working. So the first half, first half an hour, is going to be looking at those three topics at the top. The second half hour, we're going to be looking at principles of management. Uh, I think management remains the same. It's just that the situation has changed. People have moved uh, moved out of the office and we're trying to manage them remotely. Then we're going to concentrate on teams. How are teams composed and how are they coping and what can we do to support them? So again, I'll, I'll garner your opinions at that point. And then we'll, we'll touch on looking after health and well-being uh, of staff whilst they're working remotely. So just to set the scene, uh, during the pandemic, business behaviour has been varied in the UK. Some organisations have been viewed favourably, whilst others have perhaps been criticised for poor performance. JD Weatherspoons, a restaurant and pub chain, initially turned around and said, well, we, we can't afford to pay our employees, we'll just have to lay them all off, uh, which you know didn't go down very well. The Fraser Group, which is owned by Mike Ashley now, they fought the government to keep their sports direct stores open, even though the government had ordered all retail to close down. But on a brighter note, Morrison's, which is one of the big supermarket chains here, they hired 3,500 new staff uh, in order to ramp up home deliveries for people who are isolated, which is a good thing to do. Uh, the fast-moving consumer giant Unilever, I think they have influence worldwide, but across Europe, 360,000 employees. They've contributed £89 million to fight coronavirus, uh, coronavirus globally. 
They also switched manufacturing lines to produce more hand sanitizer as well. Into, uh, they pledged also to pay uh, people in their supply chain earlier than normal to ease some of the financial hardship. And then we see airlines. I mean, they were probably one of the fastest affected and airlines really run on cash flowing through the business. And we've seen EasyJet and Virgin Airlines having to transfer staff to the Nightingale hospitals, the new hospitals that have been set up, particularly in London, in the uh, Excel Centre there. So we see a variety of responses to the situation. So no doubt, uh, as individuals, we will have our own way of responding. So I'm going to be interested to hear about how you've been responding to the COVID situation and being forced into leaving the office uh, and, and working from home. Most companies will come out of this difficult time appreciating the benefits of remote working, while some employees will resent the fact that they've had this change pushed upon them. And I think this is fundamentally the problem we've got, is that people are being forced into a situation and they often feel uncomfortable. But there are a lot of benefits of remote working for the employer and the employee. And during the webinar, we're going to look at how remote working can benefit organizations and achieve this through aligning its managers to better manage their teams effectively. Remote working isn't new. I was personally responsible for overseeing a remote working uh, project for a government organization over 20 years ago, when at that time technology was expensive and limited in its application. Computer networks then and the internet were only just beginning to develop screen sharing tools and we relied a lot on emailing documents forwards and backwards uh, and then using quite primitive low band uh, video conferencing techniques. But let's leave that technology aside. The spirit of engagement of staff and the way in which they were managed provided dividends and successful outcomes. So there, there are learning, uh, we, we can learn from that. My approach here will be to look at this from a management perspective and a human resource perspective rather than put a heavy bias on technology. So what we're seeing during the COVID-19 lockdown is a change in the way we work, a change pushed upon us. We can respond in different ways. As you can see here on this uh, slide, we can resist the change. We can assume everything will return to normal in a few months. Well, I think as time goes on, a lot of us are recognizing things will go back to normal, but it'll be a new normal and a different normal. We can see the threat to our conventional management style. and We can just try and cope, try and muddle through. Or we can seize opportunities, uh, find new ways of working, uh, promote new online services, identify cost savings if we're pragmatic. So we've got lots of different ways. So what I'm going to try and do now is use a little survey, get you involved here. I hope you don't mind this. Um, I've got a survey which is uh, to gauge your reaction. So you should see this pop up on your screen. If you don't, then perhaps we'll gather your reaction through the chat box. OK, uh, can you see that on the screen? It's a question which says, how do you feel about having to work from home? Oh, you're obviously seeing it because <laughs> I'm getting the reaction. Great. Uh-huh. OK, give you a couple of minutes just to, just to look at this. Wow, quite a split. Okay, has everybody, everybody voted? Mm. Okay, okay. I've got 20, 20, 10, 10, 60%. Well, that's pretty good. I got 65% of you voting, 70% of you have voted, which is excellent. Thank you for that. Thank you for engaging. Thank you very much indeed. I'll end the voting now on that. It looks very positive, I have to say. I have to say that uh, most of you are looking forward to this and uh, most of you are uh, happy and excited. 
So there we go. You should be able to see your results there. Okay. Well, thanks for that. Gives us an idea of where we are. Let's go back to our presentation. Lovely. So as we can see, there is a split, but uh, it's good to have positive people on board. So what about common attitudes? Some managers may feel that remote working undermines their authority. It's going to be difficult to manage people if you can't see them every day. That may lead to resistance. Uh, the change is inevitable, forced upon us, as I've said, and it's difficult to think about going back 100% to where we were before we started this crisis. Some companies are even, at this stage, closing offices as a result, and I believe, you know, this this behaviour is, is going to uh, run right through business. It affects us in our personal lives too. I mean, I have a car sat outside that I haven't used for a few weeks, a second car, which is on a, a contract hire, and it's the third one I've had. And I've already decided that after this uh, pandemic, will I be looking to hire another one? No, it's due in a month's time. Um, last time, the company was trying to put prices up and get me to get a more expensive model. Already, they're now saying, oh, would you like to extend this? Because they know full well people are not going to take on uh, large commitments. The world has changed. So we see it in our private lives as well. Let's have a look at some of these common attitudes. IT, IT was a, a question I put there, and I think when it comes to being nervous about adopting remote working, IT is always a problem for some people, not for everybody, however. Some people are very computer literate and can cope well, whilst others may struggle, so you've got to be conscious about this in your team think about the people that you have working for you and how they cope with uh, with it whether they need additional support and i know that again is difficult to do at a distance because you're having to use the very it that you uh, you need them to use to be able to educate themselves so it's a it's a tricky situation it was funny the other day because um, we have uh, grandchildren staying with us in the house and they're being schooled every every day. They're doing their lessons now. I feel very confident with IT. Yet my wife said to me, um, she said, um, oh, can I add extensions to Google Chrome to allow me to modify Google Docs? And I'm thinking, is this a different language? Uh, I'm a Mac user, so I, I suddenly thought to myself, yeah, this is exposing uh, me to a, a new way of thinking for the IT. And, uh, you know, we're, we can all be caught off guard. To the tech savvy, remote working will seem a breeze. It'll give them new working freedoms. But to those who are nervous, it may be quite a daunting prospect. They may, may actually resent the fact that they've got to get up to speed quickly using uh, video conferencing and webinars. I know from telephone coaching and sales that I spent many years doing that a lot of people would be frightened of leaving an answer phone message. They would say, oh, I don't like the sound of my own voice, which is odd because I would point out to them, you won't be listening to that voice. It's the person at the other end. Now we see the same thing with video conferencing. People think, well, you know, people will be looking at my face and I don't want them looking at me. And you're thinking, well, in order to, to work with people, you sometimes do need to see people's faces. So for managers who think, you know, you've got to get on board with a technological revolution, you either get up to speed or you'll fall behind, that attitude isn't good enough. When you expect to get results from people, you've got to give them the tools in, in order to give you those results. They need to be managed individually and in teams in order to maximize the contribution. What about self-discipline? It's a daunting prospect to be isolated. Uh, one of the things you'll miss is that your colleagues are not there to help you. Sometimes when you're working in a project, you can, you can just overlook a simple thing or forget how to do something and your colleague will just be able to prompt you or give you a reminder and so on. You'll miss that if you're working remotely. So how are we going to regulate team members in working patterns to, assume, uh, to ensure that work is achieved? Different people have different levels of self-esteem and self-discipline. 
And one of the issues with remote working is that some people believe they're not going to be good at it, even if they're prepared. And you have to convince people how good they are sometimes. You have to coach them through and bring the best out in them. Some people, on the other hand, may be overconfident. And they don't consider feedback when it's offered. And they can be difficult to manage too. So again, you may need to rein in the enthusiasm with some people. As a result, a lot of managers take the, review that re, uh, the view that remote workers will be less productive than office-based staff. So this opinion may become ingrained within the culture of an organization. And it needs to be fought against in order for remote working to succeed. One of the issues I'll tackle during this webinar is the fact that enforced remote working will be encouraging managers to give priority some, to some management functions which they're doing anyway, and to, to revive some that perhaps have lapsed in the office-based scenario. I was uh, looking on LinkedIn yesterday and uh, somebody had put up some top tips for, for managers during this lockdown. And uh, one of the comments they received was, Shouldn't we be doing these things anyway? <laughs> so, you know, it's, it is surprising. Looking at the social aspects of remote working, I think this is a big, important factor. Many of us are, are social animals. We like the office scene. We like to uh, converse with other people. Um, many workers will feel that they're missing out. I'm a member of the Chartered Institute of Personnel and Development, and they regularly do surveys about uh, aspects of work, working practices from the individual's point of view. And the feeling of being involved in things at work are often a high priority for people. And we mustn't overlook this. Camaraderie, office banter, um, social groups to discuss things such as, I don't know, sport, cookery, whatever, what was on television last night. All of these things start to get lost and we have to find our own ways of, of putting these in. You know, the, how are we going to substitute for having a chat around the water filter and so on and so forth? We'll learn later how to overcome the social bereavement uh, of remote working by encouraging people to break out and have uh, group communications using web platforms and so on and so forth. Management support is uh, important as well. Uh, we need to think about uh, whether people feel that they're losing a one-to-one -one support of their manager. And as I said before, some people may need more support from you as their manager at different points in, in time. And therefore, I'm not saying you have to ration your time, but you have to find new ways of making yourself uh, available. Achievement recognition, I believe, is important as well. Some people thrive on this. They thrive on being told they've done a good job or being able to see that they're part in the puzzle. And again, you may need to celebrate good work in new ways. Um, and, and finding those new ways will be individual to your teams. Later, I'm going to ask uh, you how you feel your teams feel about the situation and what they want from you. So again, it's about opening those levels of communication. So communication, vital. I've got it on there. IT solutions do create some form of barrier to communication compared to face-to-face. -to -face. You don't always pick up the nuances of what someone is saying. Um, emails can be frighteningly uh, bad at communicating feelings because people dash the words down on the page and don't know and don't understand how they're going to be received at the other end. So communication needs to be brought to the fore. Okay. What I've done during this is to uh, put in what I call hacks. Hacks are there to, um, they're practical things that you can do to make your life move, uh, run smoothly. So forgive me using the, the term. It's a, a new trending word, I guess, out there, life hacks. But here, we, here we've got seven. And I would welcome you to put a comment in the comments box of any of your own hacks that you have used. Uh, that we can share with the other attendees. So learn to like remote working. So get your team to like remote working and appreciate the benefits. Encourage them to have a designated workspace. We'll look at we'll look at some of the liabilities later on of and uh, and and 
technical issues we need to cover later on. But get them to have a designated workspace. I've got a designated workspace where I am. I have a desk in a, a garden room. Uh, we have a large piece of land behind the house and it's, it's fully kitted out. So I'm down here. And make it work for you. You know, it's good for me because I can leave the house and go to work. Okay, it's a hundred yards walk rather than a, a, a 10 mile drive. But, you know, it's, it's that idea of making it work for you. Set the times when you're going to be working. Get dressed for work. You know, I've got a shirt, I've got a tie on, but I've got my shirt on and got dressed this morning and showered and ready for work. You should also know when to leave the office because this is important as well. Have a to-do list. And again, I can't stress enough, plenty of communication. So am I getting any life hacks from yourselves? Any life hacks coming in? How to prioritize things. Thank you. Thank you for that one. Um, I think it is important. That's why I say have a uh, to-do to list. I put it as number six, but if you want to put that at number one, that's absolutely fine. Um, priorities. Obviously, if you're working with the team, the team discussion will help you to prioritize what you need to do because you have to have consideration for your other team members. But uh, yeah, thank you for that. Thank you for that one. Okay, let's have a look at the impact of technology. As I said before, broadband now has brought uh, faster communication and connectivity into people's homes. So it's become easier to work from home. Uh, last year I was in India. I was went to see some friends and then we traveled uh, in Rajasthan for a while. I was absolutely amazed at the speed of the broadband on a mobile phone. I bought a SIM card to last me a month. It was uh, had enough data on it and communication on it for a month and it cost $8. It was absolutely incredible how that service was available even in some of the more rural areas. So connectivity we're seeing is 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 much better than it has been in the past. Fiber optic broadband again is bringing new ways to, for teams to uh, collaborate. We already know about uh, text, WhatsApp groups, emails, uh, Skype and so on and so forth. They do work in some countries, but not all countries. Different governments have different attitudes about, uh, about social media and so on. But there are uh, different platforms that are built for uh, professional use, such as Click Meeting, the one we're using here. So as a team manager, your job will be to find the simplest way of satisfying your requirements. Experience has shown me that in life, simple can be most effective. I was watching a lecture by uh, Kathleen uh, Eisenhart, a professor at Stanford University. She studied how successful people think. She suggests three rules. Number one, identify the objective. Number two, determine the bottom line. And number three, develop procedures for achievement of these objectives or the objective. She, she suggests that uh, you need to involve people in your teams to get things done. So as a manager, you've got to have clarity in setting the team objective and setting up remote collaborative tools. Determine the bottom line that the tools, what the tools need to do for you and what you need to achieve, and then look to the procedures for achieving your goal. Involve people along the way. If you haven't got uh, a system set up and your team has the freedom to make some choices, then involve the members of the team. You will always find that if you involve people in making decisions, they'll feel it was their own decision and uh, life will run a lot more smoothly for you. Effective managers often know what the solution is and effective managers have a great way of enabling their team to believe that the team itself made the right choice. Okay, so let's just have a look at some of the tools that are out there. This is not um, an advert for any of these particular tools, but it's just really to, to throw into the mix some of the names that may be familiar to some of you. And I think we can we can really start to look at a lot of tools that are based on time tracking only. So if you look at Hub Stuff and Toggle, uh, for instance, they are just tracking time. So if you have a team that's doing 
you know, um, mundane, repetitive jobs and you just need to know that they are active and working, then is time tracking going to be sufficient? You know, want to know what time they switched on their machine, what time they started calling clients, what time they started processing data, and so on. So you may only need simple systems. Don't go for complicated if you need simple. Then a lot of tools are based around project management. In fact, a, most tools have some element of project management built into them. Workzone, Trello, uh, are the ones that are moving now towards more collaboration. And then we have a series of tools that I would say are communication tools and maybe note-taking tools. So your communication tools would be in your uh, Skype and your Slack, which is often seen as the gold standard uh, of instant messaging with searchable team collaborations built in. And then you've got note-taking tools, uh, Google Docs, Zoho Docs. Microsoft has a plethora of, of, of products out there. And again, Microsoft Project for project management, uh, share and outlook and so on and so forth. So we have, we have very many tools uh, at our disposal. So a question I've got for you, please put a comment in chat if any of you have a tool that you're currently using uh, and why. So if you, if you have something here, if, if you've got a, a favorite tool that you're using for sharing, please drop me a little comment in the chat box and I'll pick that up uh, at my end. Nothing coming in yet. Okay, fair enough. Okay. Oh, Dropbox. Yeah, somebody keen on Dropbox. Anthony, thank you. Yeah, Dropbox, um, Dropbox, Google Docs, uh, Microsoft uh, have their OneDrive. There are a lot of these things out there. Um, so, yeah, these can be very, very handy. Very, very handy indeed. Thanks for that. Okay. So, uh, with technology, what you have to do when you are uh, looking to integrate things you must, or choose a system, consider integration, whatever you do. It has to integrate with anything that's being used within the company. Uh, specify functionality that you require, look at ease of use, and determine its acceptability to your team members. If you don't, if you try and push something on people, they'll push back. We've talked about this sort of thing before. So do bear in mind your platforms such as HR, software, accounts, and payroll, very important. You don't want to be doing work on a platform that doesn't tell the HR people uh, and the wages department to pay you for, for the work you're doing. So, you know, it's in your own interest in some respects to get that, uh, get that uh, set up correctly on the right platform. Functionality, think about what Professor Eisenhardt says, keep it simple. Just specify what it is you want to get out of this uh, collaborative tool. And then ease of use. One thing I would add here, and you can see I put a nice telephone on there for you, a bit of an old school one from the 1940s, I think, but um, a lot of people overlook using the telephone. I've, uh, you know, I work with a company that, uh, that had a problem with its communications and email communications. And I went in and I was watching these people. They were sending emails to people across the room that they could within, you know, that they could see. And I'm thinking, why are they doing this? And then they're getting frustrated because that person hasn't opened their email yet. And I think, well, if it's that important, just pick the phone up. You know, so okay, they could walk across and talk to them. We have lost that by having to work remotely. But the telephone is still a very, very powerful tool and very much overlooked, I think. So so let, let's uh, let's look at it from that perspective and try and encourage people to use the, the telephone more. Okay, managers are concerns about remote working. Is it difficult or is it just different? One of the major concerns a manager will have when starting to manage teams remotely is that communications with individuals and teams may become difficult. But we need to have a paradigm shift in our mind. We need to think that it'll be different rather than difficult. If we think it'll be difficult, it probably will. If we think it'll just be different, new, exciting, better, then it probably will. The way you think when you uh, approach a, a situation usually determines the, uh, a bias towards the outcome. 
So think better, think different rather than thinking difficult. Resisting change is, uh, is quite normal in people, so you have to find ways of overcoming it. When you're thinking about change, think about driving forces. What's pushing us towards this change and what are, what are the resisting forces? What are the things that are stopping us? Um, you can do this on a, on a sheet of A4. You could draw arrows that indicate the pushing forces that are driving for the change to happen and those that are resisting it. And um, I think that if you do that, you'll get a, a, pic a picture of, of what you need to tackle. Okay, I just uh, just picking up a comment from the last uh, from the last issue. Chances of miscommunication on the telephone in case of decision making are more. Yeah, I would I would agree. If something is very serious um, and needs to be discussed in writing, put in writing, and gauge opinions and get decisions made, then you can do that with follow up documents. But the discussion on the telephone. Uh, could be an advantage. So uh, thank you for your comment there. Thank you for the comment. Okay, so what do we, on this, top, on this topic, so what can we do as managers to improve communications for, for remote workers? First thing we can do maybe is to, um, is to move meetings to virtual meetings in order to ensure that all staff are up to speed with the technology and become comfortable with the communication tools. So if you do this and you start with uh, the less important topics, then that gives you a chance to bed in the changes of using, of having to use communication tools rather than sitting face to face in a meeting room. Then you, once you're assured that people are comfortable with those tools and know the uh, protocols, you can then build on that and move to your important subjects. As with any change, you're gonna have early adopters and laggers. So you need to pay attention to those two groups. Um, in the middle, maybe you can use your early adopters as champions to help you to spread the word. And those people who, as they become earlier, um, the later adopters, they, they get used to using the programs and so on and so forth, get them to support the laggers so that you get everybody up to speed nicely. Remove confusion by investing in platforms such as chat, project management, we've talked about. Have consistency of use. Don't have too many platforms that, that, um, that uh, confuse people. And allow the, the team to determine the way in which they operate, their modus operandi. I don't say that you want to take a draconian attitude, rather I'm saying you should persuade people to all operate from a single or a simple or similar point of view. So managers' concerns about remote team working. Again, please drop any uh, comments in the chat box of your concerns. Most managers I uh, speak to are worried about the resistance to change. Some are worried about how are they going to manage outputs? Well, um, we should be doing this anyway. People should have smart objectives set. They should have key performance indicators or KPIs. But still we have managers who have that reaction that they can observe people and tell whether they're busy or not. For many years, I worked in manufacturing. And I can understand this because I started in printing, then in print finishing and conversion of products. And you could always walk onto a shop floor and tell whether that factory was busy or working efficiently. You just picked up the nuances, the sound of the machines, the way people held themselves as they worked around. You could tell whether it was a happy uh, and engaged workplace. So I can understand why some managers will observe their teams in an office and know that things are running well. But um, we need to, uh, we need to uh, think about uh, how people are going to achieve their KPI. What I'm seeing here is one concern, which is really down to earth. Some people uh, seem to struggle working when kids are at home uh, from school, especially if uh, the partner's still working. So 
this is a work-life balance issue. And uh, I'm going to come on to some of the, the, the tips for managers. And one of the, the tips I'm going to use is get to know your people. Because if you get to know your people and they have young kids, if very young kids, then you know that maybe they don't sleep well at night. And if they have kids that are lively, then those kids are going to be around when you're trying to work. So it is a juggling act. Very, very good point. And thank you for making that one. Uh, we will try and address it as we go through. Um, as a manager, however, review your attitudes to remote working. And I think that um, as a manager, one we might say, well, if you're working, you're working. You're not looking after your kids. But if you're enforced into that situation of working from home, you're going to have to do both. Um, so what you might do as a manager is you might say, well, okay, is there a time of day when the, the kids go for a sleep, for instance? Or is there a time of the day when they have a favorite TV program? You know, it's something else that's going to engage them so that the worker, the, the parent, can spend their time with their busy head on and really focus on the job. And then the rest of the time, maybe they can just handle some emails and lighter tasks when the kids are around and uh, causing a distraction. So it's about finding patterns of work, if you like, to try and to try and work around. And And you need to trust as well. You need to trust your staff. And you need to communicate in that receive mode. So you need to hear what issues are being faced by the teams and by the remote workers. So again, some essential hacks. I don't know why they're always seven, but seven's a nice number. It's supposed to be lucky, isn't it? Um, look at your attitude and be prepared to change. So as the manager, can you change your attitude to the way in which people are having to work at the moment? I guess you can. Um, recognize, uh, get to know people well, understand their home circumstances. This fits in very, very well. I've got a, a lengthy comment just come in. Okay. I may have to look at that one and read it through later, but thank you for that. It's uh, from the oil and gas sector saying managers are not always willing to switch to remote work due to worries of low productivity. So uh, maybe I'll address that later because uh, it's quite a lengthy comment, but thank you for that. I, I really do appreciate your interactions. Okay. Um, if anybody doesn't want me to share, because I'm moderating these, they're not made public at the moment, but I will make the comments all public later on so we can see the comments that were made. Um, if anyone doesn't want that, then let me know. Okay, we've talked about getting to know our people well, understand their home circumstances, which fed into that last uh, uh, last comment about being isolated at home with children. So the more you know about the home circumstances of your worker, the, the better the relationship you can have. I work for myself. Um, my kids are grown up, but my grandchildren are just coming into teenage so uh, and I've got some very young ones as well and um, so my circumstances allow me to work around so I can you know I can come and do a couple of hours work once the grandkids have gone to bed if, there's, if I'm not watching TV I can do that uh, I can start early in the morning um, UK time I started at six this morning um, before people were up and about. So you can do these things. You can work at different ends of the day if the work allows that. But you need to understand what, what your tasks are, what your KPIs are, and what the circumstances are of your people. Look for talent in the team and recognize that. Get, get the, uh, the right people in the right place doing the right work. And, and seek out benefits of team working for the organization. This is often a good thing uh, for, as a team exercise just to, to get them to talk amongst each other and say, what is it you can do to really benefit the organization in this difficult time? Don't take it all on yourself as the, as the manager. Try and uh, coach your team to come up with the ideas. Get your staff working to their strengths. Uh, and I think the last one, clear and fair guidelines. It has to work for all. You can't have favorites. You can't Put more work to one person than another and give people what they seem to have an easy ride and you have to have fairness 
So uh, we're a little over halfway through and we've uh, we've covered the first three boxes. So we've got principles of management remain the same. Some of the stuff we've we'll already covered. Uh, team composition and coping with social disruption. And um, looking after teams' mental health. I've got another comment come in. Yeah. Would I recommend regular one-to-one -one Skype sessions with team members? Certainly, yes. I would say that wherever possible, if you can have one-to-ones with team members, that is fine. But if you do it for one team member, you've got to do it for the others. And I think, you know, because that comes back to what I was just saying in the last slide, slide about established, clear and fair working guidelines, um, that, that yeah, if you're going to do it for one person, do it, do it for everyone. But thank you for that comment uh, or question. So moving on, uh, I'll have to speed up a little bit, but uh, let's just have a gauge at this point and say you, your management practices will uh, have been prioritized in the past of working uh, in an office environment. What is it you think your team needs to do what do you think your team needs from you as their manager just now? So what is it they need, do you think? Any comments on that? Sure, we've got a set direction. Maybe we have to monitor attendance, milestones for progress. We have to communicate. But what is the extra? I've got a, I've got a comment in, understanding, of course. And how do we demonstrate our understanding? Generally speaking, if, uh, if someone um, is talking to us in communication and we want to know whether we're, they're being understood, you can recap on things. Uh, if, you, if they just want to feel that you have understood their situation, then you need to demonstrate empathy. Uh, you need to say, yeah, this is a difficult time. I know you're working your best and, and trying to cope. I'm here to help you, you know? Um, they need motivation to feel part of the team. And again, encourage team members to motivate and encourage each other. I think one of the key things within the team is celebrating success. I managed a program called Investors and in People in the UK, uh, another government program uh, some years back. And they used to, uh, it was all about good management and bringing people on and training people up. And they would regularly have celebration uh, meetings and meals together to celebrate. Is there some way we can do this virtually? Can we, you know, have a, have a group meeting where we actually stand up and somebody stands up and, and, I don't know, writes a poem or makes some comment or something to really celebrate success and make you feel part of the team and, and that you're, you're wanted. Time constraints. I'm getting a comment on time constraints. Um, we're under time constraints today. I'm looking at the clock ticking away and I've got plenty of slides left. Um, but yeah, we need to appreciate how people, I think that's probably meant, we need to appreciate that uh, people are have time constraints. So if you try to get them to do their best work at their best time, uh, in limited time, that would be a good and encouraging thing you could do as a manager for a team. Yeah, very lively. Thank you for all your comments. Thank you very much indeed. Um, principles of management remain the same. Uh, research has shown us to, that, that to get the best out of people, we need to do a few different things. Focusing on individual, um, for sure. But you have to strike a balance between focusing on the team. I think it was John Adair. He drew three circles and he said, you've got to focus on the task, focus on the individual and focus on the team. And if you push those circles together so they intersect, if you can balance that in the middle, you'll be a great manager. So take that on board. Look up John Adair if you can. Focus on the individual. Uh, you know, the one-to-one -one Skype, if they're comfortable and want that. Uh, some people are more demanding than others. Some people like to be left alone, particularly when they've got their heads down and working on a project. But again, don't let them feel isolated. Find a way of striking the right balance. Trust. We've got to establish trust. How do we do this? It's always a, di a difficult situation. Is is this and a difficult topic? But I think you build trust. You can't you can't just say yeah well, I trust you. You have to demonstrate it. You have to be 
um, consistent in the way you deal with people so that people trust you and then that trust will be repaid. So you have to allow people to find their ways of working, find their feet in this new way of working. Um, so you, you need to give a little at this stage. And in order to trust people to do something, you have to clarify what you expect of them. If you expect them to report in at a certain time, no matter how difficult, then say to them, look, I need you to report into me at such a time. And if the kids are in the background making a noise, I don't care. That's fine. Just pick the phone up. Speak to me. I need to know each day that this is being done. I need a catch up, you know, and the circumstances have changed. So don't don't worry. Give people, you know, let them know what you expect of them. We've talked before about uh, getting people to do the right part of their job, recognizing talent. Um, if people are very talented at communicating in this way, maybe you let them uh, chair the meetings. Maybe you, you uh, let them come to the fore. And finally, as a manager, you need to know when to let go. I had a great manager once called Jeff Mann, who um, would never give you a direct answer. He would always coach you to come to the conclusion yourself. So instead of having his foot on the accelerator, driving his sales force forward, he would always take his foot off the gas and let you find your own way. For sure, he let you know if he didn't hit your target, but <laughs> he, he did have that way of about him of, of, of taking, uh, taking the heat off. So some more hacks here. Any comments welcomed, but I put seven hacks up for managing remote teams. I'm sure you can all read them. first one we covered earlier second one this is reading between the lines that means listening for the unsaid things and then challenging the team and saying when you say this in context of that do you mean the other <laughs> so learn to listen well and read between the lines the third one i've just covered encourage information sharing the whole point of a team is that they can achieve more than the sum of the individuals. So it's, n it's not a competition. It's not a competition for one person to have achieved the lion's share. Uh, and finding this balance is uh, tricky, but good managers learn how to do it. So encourage the information to be shared around, and a lot of these platforms will allow that uh, to happen. And support your team members. Learn to let go. Let them get on with it. But, but have the confidence to know that you're there for them. I think sensitivity. I mentioned um, empathy before. Empathy is seeing people, seeing things from another person's perspective. I think being sensitive when you give feedback to people. Because they may feel defensive. They may feel that they haven't achieved as much as they would have done if things were in the normal state of play and therefore when you're giving feedback you should be encouraging but you still need to be able to point out when things have not gone according to plan but you need to find a sensitive way of doing that and certainly not in public it needs to be done in private if you need to uh, if you need to improve uh, performance in a particular area but before you go in find out that whether people have had the tools to do it have they had the time have they had the freedom from distractions and so on? So be encouraging and be sensitive. Any coming in? No, no more hacks there. Okay. So let's look at teams. How are they coping? A good team, a high-performing team uh, is cross-functional. By that, I mean you will have people from different specialisms in the team. Um, variety of ages. Well, age, not always the factor, but... Um, I think what we need to do is bring a variety of experiences uh, and with age comes experience. So if you want your problem solved, yeah, get, get uh, some old heads and some new heads together and you'll, you'll find ways through. Different personality types. We always say that you really need action-centered people or doers, thinkers, doers, and, uh, and uh, people with people skills to bring the whole team together. So you need three types. 
uh, if you study the work of Belbin, Meredith Belbin, uh, his theories uh, work on this basis. And the people's uh, skills are important to bring the whole team together. Also, um, if you have a team of work together before, then to some extent you're halfway there because they're familiar with each other. If you haven't, you're going to have to allow more time for that team to uh, come together and knit together. And as uh, we said before, simplicity in mind. Teams function well when things are kept simple. So simple reporting lines, uh, simple procedures, simplify everything, um, give them uh, some um, stability to work within. And again, as I said before, uh, celebrate success. There's no substitute. Okay, 10 minutes to go, so I'm going to crack on. Um, we know that uh, we get a, a loss with this disruption, a social loss. Um, here I'm just looking at FOMO, which is the fear of missing out. People sometimes are worried about missing things out and people need the motivation. So what can we do? Can we find ways to replicate the office buzz? Engage our team workers with video chat, coffee breaks, uh, challenges. Um, we have challenges when we're in the office. People set up charity challenges to climb Kilimanjaro. And what they do is every time somebody, instead of taking the lift, they go on the stairs, they put a tick that says, I climbed so far. And then at the end of the week, we add it all together. Are there any things we can do here? Are people taking exercise when they're at home? So if they do an exercise class, a step class, can we count the steps? Can that become our new challenge? Can we have some, uh, you know, uh, social interest that we would normally have in an office space extended out into the virtual office space? Breakout groups and fundraising activities, all of these things, can we find new ways of doing this? So if you have any suggestions, put them in the chat box now. Um, encourage your team members to maintain physical health. Well, we know that we should take regular breaks from a visual display. Um, have the monitor at the right height. We'll talk about that sort of thing a little bit uh, later on. But exercise. Are we taking enough exercise? Uh, in, during the lockdown, we are restricted to an hour's exercise a day when you're allowed to leave home. Um, so uh, fortunately, I have a large garden. So a lot of exercise involves digging. <laughs> digging plants and digging flower beds and growing uh, crops and so on and so forth. So, yeah, different people have different ways of exercising. Are we monitoring our weight gain, our weight loss? Uh, if we're at home and, and not at the busy office, are we tending to snack more? Do we keep hydrated? All of these considerations. And maybe, you, you know, maybe your government issues some guidelines. Our government certainly does have some health advice about smoking, drinking, other habits, and so on, snacking habits, um, getting people to control their health themselves. Um, so look into that and look into uh, whether members of the team are up for some challenges uh, that are going to keep them interested. So what about uh, looking after your health uh, of your team from a, from a point of view of HR and legal issues? Review your home working policy and discuss this openly. If you haven't got one, <laughs> you need to write one. Um, address how manage, how employees will be managed and supervised. What are the lines of communication and so on and so forth. Ensure continuation of employees' rights because sometimes people may feel that their rights are under threat if, the, uh, if they're now displaced from an office. Risk assessments, very important in the home environment and pretty tricky to do. It's not always feasible. Uh, when I was setting up remote working programs, we had a risk assessor who would come around and, and look at the uh, office setup. They would provide you with a, a chair. The one in the picture there is five feet on it, so it's got stability and it's uh, adjustable to give back support and so on and so forth. But uh, you need to uh, maybe get your individuals to use a mobile phone just to just to go around their workplace so you can check uh, and work with health and safety and your HR policy on that. So pay attention to that. People will feel that they're 
that you're not being intrusive, but you're looking after their health. You have to sell this to, to people and make sure that you're, you um, stress the importance. Um, in the UK, there's no obligation for employers to provide equipment, but I would suggest that most people will provide equipment. I've got a colleague up the road. He offers support to businesses, and he has been um, just ordering laptops and, and setting them up with uh, remote working programs uh, night and day for the last few weeks. So, um, again, you know, uh, provide the equipment, give people the tools to do the job. Um, ensure that if pe people are not going to be out of pocket, there may be some additional home costs, particularly uh, with maybe air conditioning in your countries. Uh, and if we move into winter to heating bills in our country. So um, there will be lots of, uh, of, of home costs that maybe need to be uh, looked after there. Ensure that people understand what's happening with salaries and benefits. We're hearing of furlough schemes where people are laid off and yet still paid and their jobs are kept open and they're paid a percentage. Um, so ensure that you talk openly about salaries and benefits with HR people and make sure that, that these niggling worries are not getting in the way of people's uh, health and well-being and their working environment. And then data protection. Um, very important, I think, some people may be tempted to use their own laptops, their own uh, computers, and it's surprising. You know, I looked at my Google Drive and I didn't know that my phone was connected to it and every time I took a photograph, it was filling that file up. So sometimes, you know, con with confidentiality and data protection, we need to know that people are only on the authorised networks and those networks are protected um, uh, and encrypted in such a way as to, to keep that data safe. So a lot of these issues need to be dealt with. So we have reached 10.56, four minutes to go. Um, sorry I had to rattle on a little bit in the last session just to keep it to time, but do we have any questions? Please drop questions in that, uh, in that chat box. And um, what I'm doing is just trying to make those questions public now. Do we have any questions? There's a box here for questions. No questions yet. <laughs> okay. Oh. What is the top tip of all? <laughs> I love it. Uh, yeah, the, it's not in the question list. It's in the chat box, but that's come in as what is the top tip of all? I believe if you are managing a remote team and you want that team to work for you, you need to understand every member of that team. Um, you need to understand their personality, their home situation, their likes and dislikes. And you need to find out what is unique about them that will get them to work with other members of the team. So I think my top tip is get to know your people, get to know what will make them good team players. And thanks for that, Anthony. Thanks for that question. Do you, oh, another question come in. It's come in on the, on the chat box, but that's absolutely fine. Do you think managers will need a remote management practical course to be able effectively manage, to effectively manage their team. Not every manager is skilled for remote work. Um, well, of course, yes, I would say yes. I'm a, tra I'm a trainer who delivers management courses. I would hope that this webinar has given you some information that you can take away and use. That's why I know we only had an hour and it's not a training course, but I thought if I put those slides with the top tips in there, the hacks, the life hacks, uh, then you can start to work on those. You will be part of the way there. But I think, yes, managers will probably need a practical course, um, which, you know, I will um, talk to Aztec and see whether we can put a course up there where we can use some of the uh, extended features on Click Meeting to be able to get you to discuss things and interact. And maybe we can do face-to-face -face, uh, video at that time, which would be more appropriate with small groups to talk about how we practically manage people. So yes, I would suggest that, uh, that yes, we do. 
Good. Thank you for that. I'm click. I've clicked something here, and I'm not sure that uh, you can see all of these, but they're here anyway. So thank you for that. That was my top tip, and uh, I do think that we need some practical training. Um, and thank you very much for attending. So thanks for uh, for attending, and keep yourselves safe, and um, enjoy working with uh, your remote teams, and. Um, Oh, sorry, summary of some key points. Just just there before we go. But thank you again. Thank you all for attending. And um, as I say, stay safe. Keep your family safe. Uh, let's hope and pray for a, rework, uh, a return to a, some normality shortly. But we have to do it in a, in a safe way. But thank you all again for your uh, interaction uh, during the seminar. Thank you.